Interviewing is more of an art than a science. On today's second part of the hiring mini series, we're going to discuss the top 10 red flags interviewers should be on the lookout. As you watch, feel free to leave a comment down below with your interesting interview stories and red flags that you watch out for. Although these are the traditional red flags, consider giving employees the benefit of the doubt, especially when it comes to things such as appearance and transportation options. Always be cognizant to avoid evaluating applicants based on socioeconomical factors. The first red flag comes right at the start of the interview process. Was the employee late to the interview? Being late to an interview can establish that the candidate poorly manages their time, is a bad planner, or at worst has no respect for another's time. Look, we've all been there. Mistakes, accidents happen. Issues can arise on the way to the interview. Instead of immediately judging a candidate, however, inquire as to the tardiness during the interview. For example, a car accident or breakdown should not be evaluated against the employee in the same way someone who was out partying the night before and just woke up late. The next red flag to watch for during the interview process is when employees disparage or gossip about a former employer or their colleagues. An employee's attitude and opinion about a former employer may serve as an indicator about their attitude towards work in general. If a potential employee is complaining, gossiping, or disparaging a previous employer or colleague, this may be an indicator of how they will treat you and your company on their way out the door. On the other hand, interviewers should be on the lookout for arrogance from their candidates. A potential employee who is constantly bragging or being cocky may be trying to conceal past failures or otherwise not owning their prior mistakes. This may be also an indicator that such candidate would not work well on a team, especially if they're trying to take credit for every accomplishment of their prior employer, or otherwise indicating that they were consistently in a position to save the company from some mass disarray, especially without some sort of detailed, specific supporting facts, which interviewers should certainly inquire on if such cases arise. The next red flag to watch for is when an employee is unprepared for the interview. Does the employee know the general details of the position? Is the candidate aware of general background of the company? Does the interviewee know the interviewer's name? Is the candidate prepared with questions about the position or the company? Does the candidate present in a professional manner or in a manner consistent with the job duties? Being unprepared for an interview may be an indicator of the candidate's preparedness for work meetings or other projects or otherwise shows a a lack of interest in their job in general. Along these same lines of being unprepared, interviewers should be on the lookout for candidates do not have any inquiries or questions or otherwise show interest in learning more about the position for which they're applying. Not asking questions shows either a lack of interest for the position and or a lack of understanding for the role. On a greater scale, it can be a sign that the candidate did not do their homework, is not listening to the interviewer, and may be unwilling to ask the hard questions that find solutions to tasks in their position if they were to get the job. Similarly, candidates that focus solely on pay and benefit questions indicate that they may not have an interest in the future success or growth of their position or the company in general and are just looking for that paycheck. Next, is the candidate making too many demands before they're even hired? Are they requesting too many position accommodations? Even after being hired, there is a difference between negotiating rational employment conditions, such as pay, benefits, or title, and making non-negotiable upfront demands, such as a demand to work from home when the position doesn't otherwise entail that. These candidates who lay out unrealistic demands or those that are not otherwise part of the position are likely to be high maintenance employees who will only get worse after hired, creating future headaches for you. The next red flag to be on the lookout for is job hopping. Candidates who have a lengthy work history without explanation, such as layoffs or moving, or who may have a tendency to hop from job to job without a rational explanation may not be long for your company. If you are looking for employees who you expect to be with you for a long time, these are the types of candidates to avoid. It may also show candidates that otherwise have work history issues, such as discipline or termination, which may cause them to jump from job to job. Employees are generally happy and successful at their job do not tend to leave that job without a rational or specific reason. Employers should also be on the lookout for candidates who fail to own past mistakes they may have made that come out during the interview process. Imagine asking a candidate to discuss a prior problem they encountered in a job or how they remedied a mistake and they immediately try to shift blame instead of addressing how those issues were corrected. Refusing to own up 
to or accept past mistakes may be a sign of how a candidate would react similarly with your company. Good candidates take ownership of their mistakes and can explain what they learned and how they grew from such mistakes. A lack of self-awareness is rarely coachable. The next red flag to observe is whether the candidate can specifically describe their prior work duties and responsibilities. The ability to explain prior tasks in detail is a good indicator that the person pays attention to their work and their responsibilities and truly understands them. It also shows engagement into how their role fits into the larger picture of a company. Good candidate is one who can adequately describe their prior experiences and their duties. Next, does your candidate have career goals both within your company and beyond? A red flag is when employees lack this personal insight. A candidate who does not care about their own goals or career is less likely to care about your goals as a company or the growth they may try to achieve achieve within it. Good candidates are those that are noticeably excited and passionate about working in their position and for your company. Great interviewers will tailor their questions around these red flags we discussed, either trying to get the candidates to parse them out or get them to explain them when they arise. Candidates can also be on the lookout for many of these red flags emanating from their interviewer as well, as they may be a sign of a company they do not want to work for. I hope you enjoyed this second part of our four-part hiring series. We still have lots more information to come in our final two parts, so subscribe so you do not miss these future episodes and the other great episodes on your screen now. Finally, don't forget to comment down below with your funny interview experiences and any red flags that you pick up on. We'll see you again next time.